Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a palm-sized mini PC, and they're claiming that this is the world's most powerful palm-sized mini PC, known as the GMK Nook Box. Now, before we get started, I do want to mention that this is a beta unit. It's a pre-production unit. This is not the final quality or the final performance that we're going to see out of it when they launch it on Indiegogo, so just keep that in mind. Recently on my channel, we took a look at the Chewy Lark Box, and personally, I'm a big fan of this little PC. It's got a quad-core Intel CPU, 6 gigs of RAM, a couple USB ports on it, and overall, it's an awesome little unit. And they claim it's the world's smallest 4K mini PC. And I mentioned the Lark Box because the GMK Nook Box is basically the same exact size. It's actually a little shorter and a little lighter, and they're claiming that this is the world's most powerful palm-sized mini PC. And taking a look at the specs on paper, it is a bit more powerful than the Chewy Lark box, and we also have more RAM coming in at 8 gigs of LPDDR4 instead of 6 in the Lark box. But ever since Chewy launched their campaign for the Lark box, I've seen a bunch of these super tiny mini PCs come to the market. But the one we're going to be taking a look at today is known as the GMK Nook box. They're launching an Indiegogo for this. Base price is $159, and that'll get you 128 gigabytes of storage, and it goes on up from there. And another thing that I noticed about the GMK version is the power supply that comes with it. It's much smaller than the one that came with the Lark box. So overall, this will be a smaller package. So here it is. The first thing I really noticed when I pulled this out of the packaging was the aluminum shell. I'm actually glad that they used this instead of plastic. Overall, this is a super tiny mini PC. On the front, we only have a single power button and an LED. On the right hand side, we have a micro SD card slot for adding extra storage and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. This will work for headphones and a microphone. And moving around back, this is basically all the ports we have. USB Type-C for powering the unit, full size HDMI, and two USB 3.0 ports. The top half of the shell is made out of plastic and this is not a passively cooled box. We actually have an active fan inside of here. So we're going to pull air in from the top, push it out through the back. So taking a look at the specs on the Nook box, they're very similar to the Lark box, but we do have an upgraded CPU. It's just a tiny step up. The Intel J4125. This is a low-end quad-core CPU up to 2.7 gigahertz. The GPU is the Intel UHD 600. For RAM, we have 8 gigs of LPDDR4 running at 2133 megahertz. Storage is all handled by an internal M.2 SSD. You can pick one up with 128, 256, or 512 gigabytes of storage. It's got 802.11ac Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5.0 built-in, two USB 3.0 ports, full-size HDMI, a USB Type-C port only for powering the unit. I've tried a couple different adapters and I can't get anything else to work except for the power adapter. We also have that 3.5 millimeter audio jack and a micro SD card slot. And as for the operating system, this will ship with Windows 10 Home 64-bit, but you can run Linux on here also. Okay, so here we are. We're running Windows 10 Home 64-bit. As you can see, we have that Celeron J4125, base clock of 2 gigahertz, burst up to 2.7. 8 gigs of LPDDR4 running at 2133 megahertz and the built-in Intel UHD 600 graphics. There's one major issue that I've already noticed with this box, and that's the cooling system they have built in here. It is not sufficient for what we're doing, and it hits thermal throttle really quickly under load. So over here, I have core temp running. As you can see, we've already hit 88 degrees Celsius. That was just from launching Edge, CPU-Z, Task Manager, and core temp itself. Now, under normal circumstances, like let's say YouTube video playback, we'll just hit up a 4K video real quick. It's not bad. We're not going to thermal throttle here, but it does get quite hot. We've almost hit up to 90 degrees Celsius, and we're at 4K. I do notice a lot of drop frames with this one here, as opposed to other smaller PCs that I've tested with this same chip. But with these drop frames, I mean, it's really hard to tell with the naked eye. If I have this off, you'll really never notice it. It'll do 4K video playback pretty decently. I've tested Netflix, YouTube right here. We'll go full screen with it. And Plex. So it will do 4K video streaming like it sits right now. And it does a pretty decent job. As for web browsing, it works great. I mean, like any other little mini PC would. 
just head over to the Raspberry Pi website. Everything loads up nice and quickly. You want to check your email with something like this. It's going to work out just fine. Even with these temps that we're seeing here, they're not bad for a tiny PC like this. But when it really comes down to it and you want to do some intensive tasks like play a game, it really jumps on up there. So we're going to go with Minecraft. And I do have Afterburner running up in the top left hand corner. We have the GPU usage, CPU usage, RAM, FPS, and we also have the core clock on the CPU and the core clock on the GPU. This will jump up in just a second. We'll just go with creative. So as you might know, this isn't a super hard game to run and we did hit 103 degrees Celsius. But uh, right now we're sitting around 95 and you'll see that CPU clock drop down. And that's the CPU trying to cool itself off. Down here, it's looking pretty decent, but when we get up, 100 degrees Celsius. And that CPU is now sitting at 1.6. I've seen it go as low as 1.4. It'll jump back up because it cools off, but then it'll go right back down. And like I mentioned, this isn't a super hard game to run. So we'll exit out of here and test Overwatch and I'll show you exactly what happens. We're at 101 to 103 degrees Celsius. The CPU is at 1.6 gigahertz. We do have the GPU at 750 megahertz, which is really good. This is actually more than the little Lark box could do, but the Lark box would keep that CPU at 2.4. If this little PC had a better cooling system built in, we'd get the same or a little bit better than the Lark box, but unfortunately it's just getting way too hot and thermal throttling that CPU down. So we're not getting the maximum performance out of this chip. So I know this little box has more to offer, but our biggest issue here is cooling. The CPU just can't perform like it should because it's just getting way too hot. So I went ahead and did a quick tear down. I wanted to take a look at the cooling solution inside of here. And I noticed a small issue. There is a gap between the heat sink at the top of the box and the CPU. This is the main board here. They're using thermal paste and it's not making contact with the CPU. There's a little gap there, just like there was on the Lark box, and in the Lark box they used a little thermal pad. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and clean this up. I'm going to give you a look at the gap between the CPU and the heatsink, and then I'm going to add a thermal pad and see if we get any better cooling out of this. So I'm not exactly sure how good this is going to come across on camera, but we can see the gap here, right between the main board and the heatsink, which is attached to the top, and you can see the screwdriver in the background. So the heat sink is not making contact with the CPU, so that thermal paste was pretty much doing nothing at all. I'm going to add this little thermal pad here, pretty much the same thing that they had in the Lark box, and see what happens. Alright, so now that I have that thermal pad on, let's go ahead and launch Minecraft. If this works out, we'll test some more stuff. So far, temps are looking a lot better here, and Minecraft is much smoother. We're right there at that 60 FPS mark, at 59 on average. Not bad at all for a palm-sized PC, but we really need to get into some testing, so we're going to move back over to Overwatch. Remember, we were hitting around 103 degrees Celsius while playing that game. Alright, so yeah, temps are definitely looking a lot better here. I've seen it jump up to 90 for one second, but it's around 87 to 89. We're not thermal throttling the CPU, and as you can see, our GPU is at 700 megahertz. But our CPU is not clocked up as high as this thing should go, so we're running into another little issue here. I've tried tweaking some settings in the BIOS, but I just can't get it to jump up to that 2.6 to 2.7 gigahertz range while I'm playing a game like this. So I've contacted the manufacturer, and keep in mind that this is a pre-production unit, so there will be issues. We've got that temp under control using that thermal pad. I've mentioned that to them. And I've also mentioned the issue we're having with that CPU not clocking up while we're playing 3D games. So they're working on a BIOS update for this. This could definitely turn out to be an awesome little mini PC. And I'm actually glad I got my hands on one early just so I could see what was going on with it. All the little issues that I've been running into, I've been sending over to the manufacturers so they can get this all fixed up before the official production begins on this. And like I said, they will be doing an Indiegogo. It hasn't launched as of making this video, so they definitely have time to get all this fixed. The campaign isn't live as of making this video, but they do have a sign-up page, and you can get up to 24% off for a super early bird discount. I mean, it's really up to you. 
but if they do fix all of these, this could definitely turn out to be the most powerful palm-sized mini PC. But that's it for this one. I really appreciate you watching. Definitely keep an eye on the channel because I will have a couple more videos coming up on the GMK Nook box very soon. I'm just waiting on a BIOS update from the manufacturer and we can get right down to some real testing. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.